Hello, Namaste, a warm welcome to one and all to my YouTube channel Passion Padma. Now in this video and audio, I am doing the poem of class 10, Amanda, chapter 4, written by Robin Klein. Robin Klein is an Australian author of books for children. She writes children's and young adult fiction. Robert Glenn has expressed the views of a little girl in the poem Amanda. Amanda is about a 9 to 10 years old school going girl who is constantly pointed out by her mother for making mistakes. Mistakes which the parent considers so as they are not part of the code of good conduct laid out by the society in which we live. So, in the poem, Amanda, the poet Robert Klein, says that a child should never be denied freedom. It is with the upbringing of a small child. Amanda is a very innocent, immature girl. It highlights the struggles faced by the girl. In the poem, Amanda, stanza 1, 3 and 5, you can read that one of the parents is speaking to her. Most probably it is her mother because we know only a mother or caretaker asks and gives the range of instruction. This suggests that the speaker is Amanda's mother and stanza 2, 4 and 6 are given in parenthesis because they reflect the inner thoughts of Amanda. So the speaker here is a little girl Amanda. Let me read the poem and explain each stanza. Don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders. Amanda, stop that slouching and sit up straight. Amanda, hunch, bent, slouching, sitting in a lazy way. In the above stanza, the poet is describing Amanda, a little girl who is always pointed out by her mother for her mistakes and the next stanza tells how she imagines her life to be. Amanda is instructed by her parents for biting her nails and for sitting lazily with her shoulders bent. To understand better here, the poet says that the mother is nagging at Amanda for biting nails which is a bad habit. Next she asks her to sit straight without bending her shoulders. Amanda bends her shoulders and sits lazily, is being pointed out because her mother wants her to sit in a right posture. The tone of instruction here is not a friendly one and thus fails to make any sense to Amanda. The second stanza. There is a languid emerald sea where the sole inhabitant is mean, a mermaid drifting blissfully. Languid is relaxed. Emerald is green color. Soul alone. Inhabitant resident. Blissfully happily. At this point of time, when she is being scolded by her mother, she imagines herself to be in a deep, beautiful green sea. Amanda uses her imagination as an escape point from day-to-day -day commands of her mother. Amanda longs for a place where she is all by herself as her happiness is not dependent on any other human being. Hence, Amanda desires to be a mermaid because for a child, mermaid is a symbol of freedom and wonder. So she imagines herself like a mermaid who is alone, a joyful mermaid sailing without any confines alongside soft waves of the green sea there and leads her life in a very relaxing way. Thus, here we understand that Amanda wants to be the sole resident or only resident of this beautiful green sea. She finds peace in her own created world where there are no restraints. Did you finish your homework, Amanda? Did you tidy your room, Amanda? I thought I told you to clean your shoes, Amanda. Here, in this stanza, the poet says that Amanda's mother is inquiring her about whether she had done her homework or not. And then she asks her whether she has cleaned her room or not. 
Moreover, she is also reminded to clean her shoes. So here we can see that the mother is constantly asking her questions. These set of instructions mark a shift from the instruction given in the stanza. Her name is being called again with an exclamation mark which shows that the parents seems to be losing their cool and are troubled. I am an orphan roaming the street. I pat in soft dust with my hushed bare feet. The silence is golden. The freedom is sweet. Here, orphan means a child whose parents are dead. When Amanda was asked about whether she had finished her homework or had made her room tidy and also whether she had cleaned her shoes, she is again lost into her own world after getting a fresh list of instruction from her parents. Now she wishes to be away from this daily routine life. Amanda perceives herself as an orphan roaming on the streets, moving aimlessly without any purpose. She seems happy as she draws pattern using her bare feet. Now I should tell that Amanda is not an orphan, though she wishes to be one. She is so much stressed. Amanda is a little girl who seeks golden silence and sweet freedom. So she imagines herself to be an orphan who is roaming the streets and draw patterns with her bare feet. I would like to tell that she thinks opposite to her mother. Her mother wants her to keep everything neat and clean, but Amanda wants to play in dust with her bare feet. Moreover, she is so fed up of these constant instructions from her mother. The next stanza. Don't eat the chocolate, Amanda. Remember your acne. Amanda, will you please look at me when I am speaking to you, Amanda. Acne here means pimples. Next, Amanda is stopped by her mother for eating the chocolate as previously it caused her acne. In simple ways, let me explain that Amanda's mother doesn't allow her to eat chocolates. She reminds her of pimples that Amanda faces due to eating chocolates. When Amanda is still lost in her own thoughts and doesn't care enough to look up to her scolding mother, this carelessness of Amanda further angers the parent and she scolds her for not paying attention to what her mother says. So she asks for her attention when she is being scolded. I am Rapunzel. I have not a care. Life in a tower is tranquil and rare. I will certainly never let down my hair down. Tranquil here is calm, quiet. Rapunzel is a fairy tale by Brothers Grimm. Amanda is still lost in her dreams. Amanda imagines herself to be Rapunzel. She pictures herself to be the long golden haired Rapunzel who lived in a castle and has no care about anything. Rapunzel was a character from a fairy tale that was captured in tower by a witch. The witch used to climb the tower with the help of long hair of Rapunzel that were let down by her through the window. So now Amanda wants to be Rapunzel because she imagines that the life of Rapunzel must have been very peaceful and fantastic in the tower. She feels that life in the tower will be peaceful and unusual. She confirms to herself that she will never let her hair down to anyone so that nobody could come to her in the tower. Here Amanda wanted to live free and happy. A girl like Amanda earns for freedom and space for herself. She is incapable to fulfill the expectation of her parents, I would like to tell. Stop that sulking at once, Amanda. You are always so moody, Amanda. Anyone would think that I nagged at you, Amanda. Sulking, be in a bad mood. The parents keep instructing Amanda on the do's and don'ts, but Amanda remains lost in her own dreams. 
Amanda's mother now warns her for behaving in a very odd manner. She asks her to stop being in a bad mood. Moreover, she blames her of having such an unstable mood. The mother believes that Amanda is not reacting because she is annoyed. She also scolds her by saying that her behavior will one day make people think that Amanda was constantly being harassed by her mother. Her behavior has made her parents look bad and they get worried about their image. They are concerned about how society will perceive them if their child always remains in a foul mood. Hope it is clear and interesting. Now, what is the conclusion of the poem Amanda? Finally, the mother asks her to stop being moody because she doesn't want anyone to blame her for harassing her daughter. At this time, the poet has not written any reaction from Amanda's side. This constant nagging has made her so sad that she has even stopped to imagine herself as someone else. Now, one might think, what can be the moral of the poem? This poem conveys the moral that children need to be allowed more freedom. It is true that children need to be taught good manners and adequate, but parents must also remember to give their infants their personal space, ample time to learn and enjoy their youth life. What is the theme of the poem? The central theme of the poem is upbringing of a child. While it is important for parents to teach their children what is right and wrong and instill good manners in them, parents also need to be sensitive towards the wishes of the child. Who is Amanda? Amanda is about 9 to 10 years old, school going girl. She is being scolded for things typical for that particular age. Her parents are trying to inculcate in her good manners and attitudes. Amanda is very innocent and immature. Listen to the story of Rapunzel in my next video. Thank you all. This is Padma. Have a 